I've often wondered that when I have viewed Venus, she always appeared to me all over equally lucid. I cannot say I observed so much as a spot in her. It's not all that light we see, reflected from an atmosphere surrounding Venus. Oh! The 17th century Dutch scientist Christian Huygens had identified the feature which makes Venus so bright that it can often be seen even today as a star-like object in the twilight sky. But the dense reflective cloud cover which makes Venus so brilliant was to keep its surface shrouded in mystery for hundreds of years, to the frustration of generations of scientists. Ah! This program is about the technological quest which at last succeeded in revealing the long hidden surface of Venus, and the question which scientists can now begin to answer. Could Venus, beneath its clouds, be a geological twin of Earth. In the late 70s, we essentially knew nothing about the surface of the planet because of the cloud cover. And the cloud never clears, so you can never photograph the surface of the planet. And that's fine if you're interested in clouds, but it makes it very difficult for people like us who are interested in looking at the surface features of the planet. For today's scientists, Venus is of particular interest. It is Earth's closest planetary neighbor and is similar in size and mass. So perhaps it has had a similar geological history. In the early 1960s, hope emerged that the surface of Venus might be revealed by new technology. Space travel was turning from dream into reality. And since the Venusian surface could not be seen from the Earth, why not go there direct? Venus was made a target for many of the early missions in the 1960s. Not all of them were successful. A series of Soviet missions were bent on breaching the atmosphere of Venus. The probes of the late 1960s made atmospheric measurements in descent before succumbing to intense heat and pressure at the planet's surface. The atmosphere of Venus was found to be extremely dense and acidic, with a surface temperature of almost 500 degrees centigrade. Such a hostile surface is very different to the Earth. But that didn't mean Venus couldn't be geologically similar. Progressively more sophisticated Soviet probes at last succeeded in soft landing on Venus between 1972 and 1981, revealing its surface for the first time. In 1972, Venera 8 carried a camera as well as a device for making crude chemical analyses of surface material. The Soviets sent various landers to Venus, which were designed to come down through the atmosphere in a parachute and to withstand the very high pressure and temperature on the surface. And three of these scooped up a little bit of surface soil, and the amount they could analyze was really no bigger than the end of my little finger. And the composition they found from the surface was basaltic, essentially indistinguishable from the material which makes up the Earth's seafloor. Later Venera landers were even able to take color television pictures close up to what could be basalt slabs on the planet's surface. I've got a lump of basalt here. It's a piece of volcanic rock taken from the surface of the Earth. But in terms of its chemistry, it's pretty much what the surface of Venus appears to be made of. The trouble is we can't be sure that this is what the lander pictures are showing us. The slabs could be the broken surface of a basaltic lava flow like this, but they could also be pieces of sedimentary rock or maybe just some kind of hardened crust formed on top of the soil. So the pictures were ambiguous and the chemical analyses crude, 
with large uncertainties in the measurements. And the landers all went to the same part of the planet, so no one knows how representative the samples were. Imagine the impression a visitor would get of Earth by going to just one region. Technology had now brought scientists too close to be able to interpret geological features. To really understand a planet, you need images covering large regions. And this applies to the Earth too. For example, there are large-scale fault features on the Tibet Plateau. And these were first noticed on images from cameras carried by satellites in Earth orbit. A technique's called remote sensing. But how could remote sensing from orbit see through thick permanent cloud cover such as that surrounding Venus? In 1978, the American probe Pioneer 12 used a technique called radar altimetry. Radar can penetrate clouds, and the data gave the first map showing the topography of Venus. Radar altimetry works by sending a stream of microwave pulses from an orbiting spacecraft vertically down to the surface. By timing how long the echo takes to return, it is possible to work out the distance between the spacecraft and the ground. With enough points, a planet-wide map of surface heights can be assembled.